Good morning. I'm Angela Straki. I'm the author of Wisdom for Inspired Living.com. Um, today is November 17th, 2017, and I just want to take this time to thank you, all of you who have either subscribed to my YouTube channel at Angela Straki or have left comments and participated, interacted at Wisdom for Inspired Living.com. Um, it really does mean the world to me, and I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to interact with me during this study. Uh, today I just want to talk to you about conflict and how it's not always how um, we see it. Uh, there's two parts of my blog and my video. The first part is really um, the most important part, and it's called planting seeds, and that's truth. Truth can only be found in God's Word. Um, I very much encourage everyone to just get into the Word for yourself. Get to know God. Get to know His ways, His words, His truth, because there's a lot of lies out there that we just simply fall for and we believe, and it's hard to untangle all that web um, of just confusion. And so you really will open up a whole new world if you start digging into this word, but you got to start digging in. Um, so today's scripture memorization is Matthew 10:34. It says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now that's Jesus' um, response, actually, or that's um, quoting Jesus in the Bible. Um, so the second part of my blog is this was called Coffee Cup Counseling. This is just my perspective about Scripture, and this is just a way for us to interact and just talk about what Scripture has done in our lives. So um, since giving my life to Christ nearly 12 years ago, one thing is absolutely certain. Conflict always comes with truth. I found myself in more heated discussions than I ever did in any other time in my life. People didn't have much to say when I lived for the world. Matter of fact, I had lots of friends. But the moment I came to Christ, friends did scatter like ashes in the wind. Um, not only is there conflict in the world, but there's also conflict in the church with believing brothers and sisters in Christ. Conflict just seems unavoidable. I absolutely love people. If you were to sit down with me, you would see that I am absolutely without much of any sort of bubble. The closer we get, the more loyal I become. I love people's lives, their emotions, their questions, their fellowship. My love language is time. I try not to judge people for their lifestyles. Goodness, I have a huge plank in my own eye. And I'm not shy in sharing all my past mistakes and or my weaknesses. I'm a very flawed person, but I have been redeemed by Christ. And the freedom of the potter's wheel has been my security blanket. God takes all those flaws and he little by little removes the impurities that I've let in. And he replaces them with his thoughts, his ways, and his truth. Now, when Christ grabbed a hold of my heart, he opened my eyes to things that were destroying people. I began to speak out scripture over those situations. Wow, you would have thought I opened up World War III. I had so many battles on Facebook, you would have thought that I was some sort of Pharisee. For a while, I believed I was. I even got called Evangelica, Evangelist and Angela by a family member who has very openly shared several uh, disapprovals of me on Facebook. How dare I judge sin? Who was I to tell anyone anything? I shut Facebook down several times because I did believe I was doing more harm in the world than good. How could someone who loves people so much and beg God daily for friend and family restoration be in so much conflict? The turning point for me is when I fell into conflict in church over a false testimony that I confronted. I opened the Bible and I searched how to handle the conflict. It took me weeks, months. I tried to take the steps in the most loving way possible, but it didn't turn out. I obviously didn't handle it right, at least not in that beautiful way I thought it would. Instead, because I felt that I had caused conflict in the church, and I was already told by one member they would not come to church because of me, I felt like I was the yeast of the church, and I did leave to avoid hurting anyone else. Yesterday, I watched a pastor on TBN 
tell his mega church that we are the righteousness in Christ. And the true test to know if we believe it is after we sin, say, I am righteous to God. Every red flag went off in my belly, and I thought if he preached that to my boys, I would be furious. But isn't that what most of us are trying to do? Aren't we trying to console people when they are convicted of sin? So many people are hurting and depressed and longing to be loved, and we are trying to get them to understand that God is love, but so is his correction. And the reason we feel like that is because we are in bondage to sin. And that even though that conviction of sin hurts a little, we should never compromise truth so that we feel better. We will feel better once we take care of the sin. If we can pull sin out by speaking truth instead of shaming people or keeping our mouth shut about scripture and sin, maybe then we can help heal broken hearts. My family is reading Revelation, and God is telling the churches what he approves of and disapproves of and tells them that if they don't repent, which means feel bad about and turn from, he will blot them out. How is that for hurt feelings? Did I tell you I love people? I do so much that I don't want to see anything hinder their lives and cause them to be hurt, depressed, or believing lies. I wrote a book about my depression over a marital affair in my life. I remember asking God to help me forgive that offense. It was so deep and so raw. I didn't think I ever could. I still struggle. But God gave me a vision in a dream once. He showed me the woman who had hurt me so deep, falling in an endless dark pit and screaming for help. I didn't think twice. I ran as fast as I could. I reached down like a scene in a movie, and I clamped my hand around her arm, and I did not let go. I cried, and I pulled, and I didn't let go until I had her out of danger. That's love. Not to tell them that everything is going to be all right, but to be willing to save them from that pit they've fallen in, snatching them out of sin and bringing them into truth. That's what speaking truth does even if it appears like conflict. So I took, a, I took a look at the Bible in general. I thought of Noah, of Jonah, of Moses, of the Old Testament prophets, of John the Baptist, of Jesus, and the 12 apostles in the New Testament. I took a look at how they shared the gospel. They spoke truth. I took a look at what it did to the people. It caused riots. It caused conflict, it caused anger, it caused hatred, people killed each other, and it caused the ones speaking truth to be ridiculed and hated. Most of them were killed. How's that for a thankless job? I don't recall one story in the Bible where everyone all just all compromised truth and sang kumbaya around a campfire. But there is a coming a time when we will. So does that mean that when Jesus said to come with a sword, he meant to come and fight? Absolutely not. Jesus not only came to speak truth, but he also came to correct the Pharisees and the Sadducees that were controlling the people with their religious doctrines. It made him so angry that they were preaching their ways and not God's. That the leaders were confusing the people's thoughts with religious ideologies and opinions, making them pay for sacrifice, shaming them, and not allowing them free will. Two things are very important to Jesus. One is that you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And two is that you love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, you must speak truth at all costs. But in doing so, you must never shame anyone. You must never give up on them. And you must always remember that humility means that you put others before yourself. You did not come to fight with a sword like Peter did when he cut off the guard's ear. You come to share God's truth with the sword of God, his word, which pierces the heart directly and comes to save others from a spiritual death or an eternity in hell. Conflict isn't bad, and you are not the yeast of the church if you share truth. Just make sure you are not condemning people. Sharing truth will always come to do exactly as God intended 
And sometimes that looks slightly different than what we want it to. So share away, speak truth, and set the captives free. Now, I would just love if you were on my blog site at wisdomforinspiredliving.com, if you would just take time at the meditation and discussion to just journal your thoughts on this scripture. You are more than welcome to share your insight, your testimony, your thoughts, your questions with me below. We can fellowship because of this. So share your side. Let me know what you think. Or just keep it for your own personal journal. Um, next, what I would love for you to do is just like I studied and then I'm sharing it with you, studies indicate that if we share what we have learned with someone else within 24 hours of being taught, the chances of it remaining in our memory or heart is increased. So if you've had a friend or a relative or anyone come to mind while reading this blog or listening to this video, would you please just share it with them? You can text it. You can post it to social media. You can discuss it at Bible study. You can watch my YouTube channel with them. Or just print out this blog. Invite a friend to have coffee and discuss. It's easy. So just decide, I'm going to share this blog with write down their name and then write down what made you think of them and then here's the important part pray for them pray that God's Word would just grow in their lives and in their heart that truth would take over any lies that they've ever um, possibly believed so don't forget to memorize and meditate on today's word that's what ab absolute truth is the scripture memorization is Matthew 10:34 says, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. So thank you again for joining in. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Angela Staraki, or please feel free to, to um, jot down your thoughts, your insights, um, interact with me on my blog site. I would so appreciate that. Um, thank you again for joining in, and we will see you tomorrow.